thanks for joining me today for episode 44 of Podcasting Your Brand. I'm your host, producer Jemmy, providing learning lessons for you to podcast your brand. And today I'm going to share a podcasting 101 topic, putting yourself into your show. This episode is brought to you by my own brand, Flintstone Media. Listen in and let's do this. So on the last episode, I was talking all about how to find and work with the right co-host. And I had mentioned that when it comes to working with the right co-host, there were two other points that were also very helpful and apply whether you have a co-host or hosting a show on your own. And those two points are, number one, prepare your content ahead of time so you have a good flow, but then make space for that flow to actually happen. (laughs) Leave room for banter between you and your co-host, or if you are a solo host, then it means leaving room for your random thoughts and tangents. Lord knows I am famous for them. (laughs) It's like you'll often hear in this space, people come for the content, but they stay for the host. So be prepared for your recording, but leave room for extra stuff to naturally flow into the episode. And number two, leave your crap at the door. (laughs) Like I said, on episode 43, life happens and it can drain your energy, but don't let a bad day create a bad episode. But those two points can lead to a bit of a conundrum. Leaving room for banter and also leaving your crap at the door can be a tricky balancing act. So how do you find the balance between sharing your life with your listeners and oversharing your life with your listeners. Well, that's what I'm going to get into on this episode with you. And here's why figuring out this balancing act can be so important. People do come for the content, but stay for the host. And having a podcast creates a uniquely intimate opportunity for you as a content creator. Let's look at it from the listener's perspective. Imagine you're looking for podcasts that can help you learn better sales skills to grow your business. You can go into your podcast player. And that's a really cool thing about where we are in the podcasting industry right now is that people are actually using podcast players as search engines now and looking for information on topics. So imagine again, you're your listeners, you go into your podcast player and you find three shows that spark your interest. Three shows on sales, Bob show, Hillary show, and let's say Sam show. And on Bob show, he gives very practical advice from a professional professorial tone, <laughs> mentioning that he was both a C-suite level sales team lead and a business professor for a couple of decades, local university, the whole nine yards, right? And he supports his lessons with real life war stories, both from the boardroom and the classroom. And he's very cut and dry. Okay. Now our second show host, Hillary, I remember Hillary, (laughs) Hillary learned sales from the school of hard knocks. And she's an entrepreneur, say maybe in her, I don't know, late twenties, she's mastered the use of digital platforms to spread her sales messaging. So she might be a little bit of different personality from Bob so far, right? Imagine that she's a mom. She loves to travel. I'm kind of going (laughs) firsthand, I guess a little bit. (laughs) And she volunteers uh, one weekend a month at a food bank. Okay. Then there's Sam. Uh, Sam's show is full of laughs and he presents sales from a failing up perspective, (laughs) mostly sharing what not to do. And his examples come from his own fails, but also from his guest fails. So he has a guest at show and he's not afraid to be self-deprecating. Like he lays it all on the line. When he can relate, he shares his story of failure too. We'll say that he's a single dad. He loves the three Bs, bowling, boating, and beer. (laughs) Okay, you can pretty clearly picture our friend Sam. And he also often relates stories from his parenting having to kind of sell his kids (laughs) his ideas of what he wants to do on the weekends and get them on board with things. (laughs) So three different shows, three different hosts, all on sales, but three very, very different shows because they're three very, very different hosts. And as the listener discovering those shows, 
you might listen to an episode or two of each and then really latch on to one for the long haul. And of course, content value plays a major, major role in that decision, yes. But let's just say that it's a level playing field between all three of them. And the shows just differ on the personalities hosting. Them. So that's what the episode's about. So we're dialing into differences only on personality. So which one, Bob's, Hillary's, or Sam's, do you think that your average listener looking for a show on sales is going to stick with and subscribe to? The answer is whichever host they most resonate with as a person, as a human being. Which one did you resonate with the most? I'm sure as I was giving kind of a rundown on their backgrounds and personalities, one maybe piqued your interest more than the others. Those extra little details helped bring them to life a bit more for you, I'm sure. And that's the same effect that you have when you share little details about yourself on your show. And it ultimately doesn't matter. <laughs> In my story, whether the listener picked A, B, or C, Bob, Hillary, or Sam, it doesn't matter. They picked them because they had a chance to differentiate between the three and connect most with one of them. But guess what? <laughs> that magic doesn't happen. It can't happen if you don't open up on your show and share those little details. See, podcasting is a uniquely intimate medium for a consumer to experience. You're right there in their ear. Like they're dialed into what you're saying or they're coming along on your journey of the story you are telling or they're taking notes on the lesson you're teaching and rewinding a couple seconds to take more notes again or whatever, right? But it's a much more intimate method for consuming content because you're right in their ear. There's a feeling for a listener of being a fly on the wall. And because of this intimacy, people feel like they can really get to know you. And your listeners will ultimately want to get to know you. They'll want to find and to see themselves in you. So they don't think they're the only one who's weird or quirky or into a certain hobby or opinionated about a certain thing or whatever. They want to truly connect with you. I mean, think about your favorite talk show or sitcom. There was a character on it that you love the most, or you watch that talk show because you love the host, whatever it is, you've been there. Your listeners will be there too. They truly want to connect to you. So there is a desire from them to get to know more about you. But there may also be a desire from you to share stuff that goes beyond the natural boundaries and scope of your show. That's where it gets a bit sticky. If your show is about sales, as in my example, do you mention, mm, let's say, the cruise that you're, you're looking forward to next week? Well, maybe, but definitely if it helps illustrate the fruits of your successful sales skills. <laughs> And how important it is to find work-life balance or whatever, you know, things like that, for example. If your show is about rescue dogs, do you share your thoughts on the latest installment of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I was watching a lot of Marvel today. <laughs> Perhaps. Maybe you do. <laughs> but the needle is probably on that example pointed a little more towards probably not. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, but it's something to think about. Should you, shouldn't you? And maybe thinking about sharing something like your thoughts on a Marvel movie is a bit of a silly example. But here's why I'm bringing this up. And I'm bringing it up early within the scope of the show, because here's where the danger lies. There are three main pitfalls with oversharing on your podcast. Number one is making the show all about you. Let's be honest, unless you're a celebrity, whether in the broader sense of the word or within your specific industry or space or city, whatever, no one wants to hear all about you. Like, no one wants to hear all that. And if you need a refresher on why, rewind back to episode 33 
which I called No Infomercials, Please. Of course, I'll include a link in the show notes, as I always do for your convenience in case you missed it. But it's really, really important not to make a show all about you. The second main pitfall of oversharing on your podcast is the risk of offending a large portion of your audience for no legit and valid reason. Look, we are in very divisive times and we all have opinions. But if those opinions don't have any bearing whatsoever on your show content, then think long and hard about sharing it on your show. (laughs) If it doesn't belong, it doesn't belong. And number three, the third pitfall is doing something that just plain turns people off. Like talking about something gross. (laughs) No one wants to hear about your belly button, Lynn. Or talking about something completely unrelated. No one needs to hear about, oh, maybe on some some shows it might make complete sense. Certainly on Horse Rated Network, some shows make sense. But otherwise, no one really needs to hear about how you had to take your dog to the vet that morning. That's something completely unrelated usually. (laughs) So talking about something gross or talking about something completely unrelated or going on a tangent for way too long. You get the picture here, right? That kind of a thing can just turn people off. So that's the third pitfall. And going with a rule of three theme today, there are three rules of thumb that I have in terms of whether or not to go ahead and share. And it boils down to whether what you want to share will draw people in or push them away. And again, is it within the scope of your show's content? In other words, does it lend itself to the overall value you've promised to deliver with every episode? And by the way, that overall value doesn't have to mean that it is about your exact topic and only about your exact topic. Going on a cruise has nothing to do with sales. But it's great content if the promise of your show is about sales, right? Because it can, again, illustrate the fruits of that labor, right? So what are my rules of thumb when it comes to whether or not you should share? First up, go right ahead and sprinkle in those fun, quirky, random details about yourself when they naturally come up. Like, really, don't hold back. If it ends up being an overshare, you can always just edit it out, right? (laughs) So, for example, if you have a guest, if you have a guest at show, and your guest says something in their story that mentions your favorite food, you should definitely not be afraid to be like, oh my gosh, that's my favorite. (laughs) Like, tell them, share that, let your listeners and your guests know. Or if your guest mentions being in a band in high school, Throw in that you played the trumpet terribly too, like whatever. Sometimes I've had a guest mention being a server or working in a restaurant. I'll throw in that I was a terrible server. (laughs) I've worked in several restaurants and I've done it badly every time. (laughs) Remember, the most unique thing about your podcast that nobody else has is you. And all those little details. So share all those little details about yourself. Eventually, my listeners learn that I have an admittedly quite unhealthy obsession with (laughs) making lists. I love, 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 love making lists. I also love, 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 love making Legos. I used to sing karaoke in every bar I could find. I have several tattoos. I was an EMT in college. I'm a mom, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. See, just now you had a reaction to at least one of those little details about me. You either just said to yourself, I make lists of my list too, (laughs) or flashback to playing with Legos as a kid, or playing with them over rainy weekends with your own kids, or imagine that you've never been brave enough to grab a karaoke mic, or that you're a total ham and no one can grab the mic from you, (laughs) whatever. But there was something that I listed off about me 
that you reacted to. And now those little details about me made you feel more familiar with me. And maybe you like me. You really, really like me. (laughs) So share those little details. My next rule of thumb comes from the common scenario of interviewing a guest, and you can relate to your guest with a story of your own. Do you want to share it? I say feel free to share it in the moment because your interview is really best as a conversation anyways. So have it be a back and forth. And I'll get into interview techniques in future episodes. But if you have a chance to make your interview more of a conversation by sharing something related about yourself, then do so. Share your story, which also, by the way, it also helps further relax your guest because they also like knowing that you can relate to them, not just that your listeners are able to relate to you or your listeners are able to relate to your guest. Sharing your story allows them to know that you can relate to them too and your guests will become more relaxed. Kind of a cool effect. But the key, just keep it short. Like don't share such a long story, especially not in the middle of a guest interview. <laughs> don't share such a long story that the episode ends up becoming about you. Again, especially if you have a guest. You don't want the episode to become about you rather than your guest. That would be terrible. So keep it short. Then feel free to share the long version of your story if you want to as bonus content or use it for a different type of share, like sharing on social or as a full solo episode as a separate segment to close out your guest episode. You know, lots of different ideas you can come up with to share it, but share the long version as a separate piece of content. So that's my second rule of thumb. Share a story in the moment to relate to your guest. That's great, but keep it short. Just a couple of sentences to get the gist across. As an example... If they share a story of growing up in Greece, you can mention how you loved when you visited Greece on a family trip after high school and the museums were amazing. In fact, you totally got lost in thus and such museum and we're totally embarrassed or whatever, right? I'm making this up. That kind of, that kind of a thing. Share it. It'll make your guest and your audience get to know you better and lean in. And third on the list to cover in my rules of thumb are major life events. And as I was putting this third rule of thumbs breakdown together, I couldn't help but think of one of those flowchart illustrations where there's a question in the first box. And if you say yes, then you go this way down the flowchart. And if your answer is no, then you go this other way down the flowchart. And then you find your next question and You follow the arrows for yes or no over and over over again until you get to your final conclusion. So this may feel like that to you, too, (laughs) or like a choose your own adventure book or something. See, now, you know, I grew up on choose your own adventure books. See what I did there? (laughs) An illustration in real time. Okay, back to the rule of thumb on sharing major life events. Is it a happy life event? Start with that question. Is it a happy life event? If the answer is yes, share, share, share. Let the listeners in. And that not only means letting them in on your life, but it also means letting them in on your podcasting journey too. So if you just had your first experience being a guest on another show, as an example, share that with your listeners. They'd love to hear about it. Exciting moments like that are always good. But If it's a sad life event, should you share it? Well, that depends. If it's something that's been part of the show along the way, then yes, share it. So if you've mentioned your mentor to your listeners a few times, and they unfortunately pass as an example, then share that with your listeners. Let them know that this person who was significant on your journey and helped mold you into who you are, that this person will be very missed. If it's something that will impact the show in some way, cause a hiatus in releasing episodes, cause a change in one of the hosts or some other shift, then yes, you definitely want to share that. You have to explain what's going on to your listeners. They will really, truly appreciate it. But what if it's not something you've ever brought up before on your show And it also has no impact on your podcast at all. What do you do if it's something sad 
that's completely unrelated to your show. Well, the call is yours, really. But ask yourself if it's truly needed and necessary for you to share it on your show. Ultimately, if your gut answer is no, then that should be your final answer. But if you are going to share it, firstly, you want to keep it short. But secondly, when do you share it on your episode? Well, if it's just an update you're sharing with your audience, then again, one, keep it short. I'm going to keep saying that, keep it short. And two, share it at the front of the episode. The reason for that second detail is in order for you to not end your show on a sad note. Share your news at the front and then move on with the rest of your show. If, on the other hand, it's something that comes up during the regular course of your show, like in the middle of a guest interview, then it's the same advice that I gave earlier on sharing any kind of story, especially during a guest interview. Keep it short. <laughs> sure, you're surprised to hear that's my answer. Yeah, keep it short. And consider sharing the longer version elsewhere. And if you have a co-host and it comes up during co-host banter, then do whatever works with you and your co-host for the flow of your show. I know that's a little vague, but that's the honest truth answer. It's going to be a case by case, show by show, co-host situation by co-host situation kind of scenario. And as a final note, remember that it's a lot easier to take stuff out than to try to add stuff in later and make it sound cohesive. So if you're on the fence about sharing something, share it and see how you feel about it as you edit and review your full episode. And if you ultimately want to take it out, take it out. And try every now and then to get audience feedback too on the kind of stuff that you're sharing on your show. I mean, honestly, it's good to do that here and there for all the elements of your show. But whether it's asking them directly how they generally feel about those extra details and stories you throw in, or seeing what you can interpret from your show stats, or however you want to do it, you want to take into consideration how your audience is responding. And that's important for the growth of your show. And remember, people come for the content, but they stay for the host. Just don't make it all about you. And as a quick mention, be sure that you are monetizing your expertise, that thing that is all about you, on the OWL app, spelled with two W's and two L's. Let people pick your brain after they first picked their payment method. Sign up with my referral code PL954123 and get your $10 credit. And up next on episode 45, I'll share my first podcasting 102 topic with my disciples lesson, a fan favorite on Clubhouse and other spaces. And it's a great lesson for audience growth. So if you're not yet subscribed, be sure you do. In the meantime, I have a whole host of free tips for you on my website. Just check out flintstonemedia.com slash free tips. Thanks for tuning into Podcasting Your Brand. In this chapter of the show, I'm revealing to you how you can harness the power of podcasting to expand your brand. So come and pick up what I've been putting down since 2014, avoid common mistakes, and propel your podcasting and branding forward. And if you have questions or are interested in becoming a sponsoring brand of this show, don't be shy. Reach out to me at Jemmy, spelled J-A-I-M-E, at flintstonemedia.com. It's producer Jemmy signing off for now. Remember, the only thing more powerful than your voice is your spirit to use it. So turn that mic on. 